the channel, Biblical Truth Central. I'm Brother D, coming at you all with yet another video that I hope is going to inspire you, motivate you, and give you the tools that you need to go out into this world and fight the spiritual fight in which we are undergoing at this moment. Now, I could not help but talk about this because me, you, probably everybody out there who has social media, people are hurting, people are scared. I see individuals quoting scriptures every single day to look for some sort of comfort uh, during this time of distress, this global pandemic in which we are um, witnessing today. And I see verses from the Psalms, I see verses from the Gospels, I see verses from Proverbs, but there's this one in particular verse that I keep seeing over and over and over on social media. And I wanted to make a video on it to talk about the significance of this particular verse, talk about exactly what it's you know, referring to, meaning reading the context around it, and actually learning how to apply it um, to our lives, okay? And that verse comes out of Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 13 says, When I shut up heaven, there is no rain or command to the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people. If my people who are called by my name, excuse me, if my people call my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. I have been seeing this verse here, these verses, I'll say, for the, for the past month and a half, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm just highlighting a couple of key points here because we can't just take this and expect the Lord to just, you know, do away with COVID-19, do away with the coronavirus. We need to take this, read it, and analyze what it is we're reading because it is one of those feel-good, inspiring verses to give people some hope, to give people a warm feeling uh, during this time period. So, Let's go ahead and, and we're going to take verse 14, okay? If my people, who is he talking about? If my people. We have to remember that the book of First and Second Chronicles is in the Old Testament. And anytime you hear the Lord mention anything about my people, we should know that he is talking about the children of Israel. Now, in the Old Testament, throughout the book of Judges, I'm, I'm, I'm going to use that book in particularly because in that book, the children of Israel constantly rebelled against God. They constantly turned their back on God. They constantly disobeyed God, forsook him for false gods, for false teachings. Um, Second Timothy calls these doctrines of devils. They constantly did that. So the Lord put individuals in place, um, aka judges, the judges, to deliver the children of Israel during the time periods of persecution in which they were experiencing at this time because in the book of Judges, you got to remember, this was right after Joshua died, 
after the exodus and they were dwelling in the land of Canaan. And you have to remember that there were some instances where the children of Israel did not follow the directions of God, meaning they did not kill off the people who inhabited the land like the Lord instructed them to. And since they did not kill those individuals, those wicked people who were in the land became a thorn in the side of Israel. And there are instances in where those individuals had dominion over the children of Israel. So they gave in to those people. And Israel decided to forsake God and pray to the gods and the deities that were um, that the people in the land of Canaan practiced. And every time Israel got caught up against the wall or they were in a bind or they were in trouble, they went and they started crying to God. Help us, Lord. Oh, Lord, help us. We don't know what to do. These individuals have turned on us and they're killing us and they're persecuting us. Help us. And the Lord will send somebody via the judges to deliver Israel out of the hands of their enemies. God has a track record for delivering Israel's enemies into their hands if, if they repented and turn from their wicked ways. Amen? If my people, amen, if my people who call by my name will humble themselves, humble themselves, okay? Put away their wickedness. Put away their false gods. Get on their knees. Get on their faces. And seek the Lord is what he's saying. If they will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Everything I just said contributes to their wicked ways, forsaking in the Lord. God promised that if Israel were to do this, that he would hear from them from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Amen. Now, how does this, what does this have to do with the current world that we live in? What does this have to do with our current nation? Let us remember all of us who were in Christ Jesus are adopted into the family of God. And we are beneficiaries alongside the children of Israel. Spiritual Jews is who we are. So this does apply to us. But you have to understand that if we do not turn from our wicked ways, not just cry out to God because times are hard and because people are dying, people are sick, people are in financial burdens because of this shutdown of the world. But we need to understand that if we don't turn from our wicked ways, meaning repentance, God is not going to heal this land. That is the problem with a lot of lukewarm Christians. You only call on God when it's convenient for you. You only call on God when you're in trouble. And then when the Lord is gracious, because he is gracious and full of mercy, delivers you from these things, you turn back to your own vomit. You turn back to your wicked ways. You turn back to your sin. We want God to heal this land, but the land is so corrupted and corroded with sin. We have abortions, millions of abortions, that take place every single year. Same-sex marriage is on the is on the rise. It's at a rampant pace. Individuals are trying to nullify what the Lord has put in place by shifting their DNA by ch changing their sex genders. 
all of these wicked things that the Lord, that, that causes God to turn his face away from this nation. Are you going to tell me that America is just going to stop doing these things? Let's really think about that for a second. Is America really going to stop doing these things? But we want God to heal our land. We want him to stop COVID-19. We want him to help people. Well, when are we going to stop dwelling in wickedness? When are we going to stop angering him, tempting him? When are we going to stop dwelling in sin, practicing sinful nature? When is the fornication going to stop? When is worshiping false gods going to stop? When? You know? These are the questions that I propose to the individuals out there who like to use that verse. Now, let's flip over to 2 Chronicles 30. 2 Chronicles 30, verse 9. Okay. It says, For if you return to the Lord, your brethren and your children will be treated with compassion by those who lead them captive so that they may come back to this land for the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn his face from you if you return to them capital I F if you return to him that is the stipulation we have to understand that if we want God to bless us if we want God to deliver us, we need to keep our end of the bargain. We need to repent of our wickedness and turn to him. Give him our full attention. Give our full selves over to him and serve him like the great and mighty God that he is. But again, how many individuals as a whole are willing to do things like that? It's a, it's a great question. It's a question in which I would propose to everybody out there who has decided that they were going to post that verse, you know, just to make people feel good. Now, let's go to James 4, verse 8. James 4, verse 8 says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Cleanse your hands before you come to the Lord. Purify your hearts. God does not pay attention to your words. God pays attention to the heart. He pays attention to the motives. He knows whether you're crying out because you're in trouble. And yes, if we are in trouble, it is the correct thing to cry out to the Lord. But what are your, what are your motives? How are you going to respond to the mercy of God? What are you going to do after he's delivered you? Are you going to return back to the wickedness or are you going to live an upright life of holiness and righteousness is the question. Now, we're going to read one more, one more verse out of the book of Proverbs, the book of wisdom is what I like to call it. Proverbs 28 verse 13 he who covers his sin will not prosper, but whosoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Repentance, people. This all come back, this all comes back to repentance. Turning from our wickedness, turning from the things in which displease God. I firmly believe that we are witnessing judgment on this land because of the wickedness, because of individuals dwelling in sin. I believe that that's the case. Now, do I believe that the world will repent as a whole? That is unlikely, but honestly, it's an individual thing. 
You just make sure that you and your household is in order. That way the Lord will cover you. That way the Lord will protect you. And you just continue to give that testimony. Amen. I hope that this shed is some light. I hope that this opens some eyes. I pray that the Lord opens your eyes. Always remember to study the Bible um, in its entirety so that you all can get the truth for yourself. Be sure to like this video. Comment, subscribe if you feel uh, that it's touched you. And be sure to share this video. I'll see you all in the next one. God bless.